Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. My name is Bunga Laili. It's a precious chance for me to be your master of ceremony on this very special occasion, international webinar, The Ornamental Fish and Parasite. First of all, let's say thanks to God who has given us guidance, happiness, healthy, and mercy, so we can participate in this special event without any obstacles. On this special afternoon, we have several agendas as follow. The first one is speech from the head of Research Center for Ornamental Fish, Dr. Idil Ardi. Second, main lecture, which will be delivered by three keynote speakers. They are Joanna Fermeno, MSc, who will present use of essential oils for parasite control in fish. Lily Soliha, MSI, who will present the types of parasites in ornamental fish. And the last, Tuti Sumiati, MSI, who will present handling of parasite in freshwater fish. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin this event by praying to God so that this event will run successfully. We can start praying now, pray now according to your respective beliefs. Let's pray. Amen. Now I would like to invite Dr. Idil Ardi as a head of research center for ornamental fish to give a speech. Dr. Idil, please, time is yours. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah Ta'ala who has given us knowledge which when compared with his knowledge is no more than a drop of water in the ocean. Our blessing and greeting are sent to great Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Before I continue to speak, I want to report about the participation ah, participant. Until now, participants have registered about 687 <laughs> person and have joined online about the 200. Okay, I began to speak. Uh, I repeat again about. I want to report about the participant participant uh, seminar today. Participant have regist registered about the six hundred eighty seven percent and have joined online webinar about the 277 27%. And my respect to speaker, research professor, researcher, lecture, academic, official of central and regional government, and also fishery stakeholder. And honorable to Ahmad Musa, Master of Science, as moderator, we will guide us at this webinar in this afternoon for Indonesian time and this morning for Spain time. Ladies and gentlemen, Indonesian ornamental fish consists of various types, both endemic and unique, almost all major islands have their own endemic fish. There are super red arwana in Kalimantan, botia and tiger fish in Kalimantan and Sumatra, and rainbow, rainbow fish and bangai cardinal fish uh, in Sulawesi, rainbow fish in Papua as well as several rasborah species on the island of Japan. 
all of these species could be become extinct if there was no cultivation touch and catch control. Ornamental fish research, especially for aquaculture, is still lacking purity. Apart from the fact that ornamental fish commodities are not yet a top priority, but also because it is realized that the primary need of our society are fish the meat for food needs. We should be proud. Lately, we get information from electronic media that COVID-19 pandemic era, ornamental fish business sector can survive that contributes re revenue for businessmen and stakeholder ornamental fish culture. Ladies and gentlemen, in ornamental fish culture, management of fish healthy is more important. There were two reasons why we need management of fish healthy. The first, we want to be success in this culture. I think we, we are all agree about this statement. The success means we can increase production, production and can be produced good quality of fish. In this condition will be achieved, so our business will be get advantage. The otherwise, if fish culture is infected by parasites, so we, we, we will be fine. Her face or much spend cost to handling parasite, then our business will be lost. So we are often the term in, hel in hel hand handling fish healthy. That prevent will be better than cure. The second reason related with ornamental fish as export commodity. As we know, many countries to destination ornamental fish export to precondition that they want to require petrogen free check. So we should be to ensure that ornamental fish will be export must be pathogen free. When fisheries are exported contaminant by pathogen, so our community will be reject, rejected by them. This condition will be lost to exporter and long-term effect importer do not want to buy ornamental fish from Indonesia. So our country will be lost the market. We know many par parasites can attach ornamental fish culture like our bacteria, virus, and fungi. Every parasite has specific way to control so that our fish always good condition. In this time, our speaker will be explain more how we can be good management fish healthy. The topic presented beginning with parasite and telltale in ornamental fish which will be presented by Laili Solica, Master of Science. From a research institute for ornamental fish culture in Indonesia. And the second speaker, uh, Tuti Sumiati, Master of Science, which will present handling and parasite in freshwater fish. From uh, Research Institute for Freshwater Culture. And the last speaker will be a presentation by Joanna Fermino, Master of Science from Farm Page Technofit, 
spine from spine ladies and gentlemen with this the correlation between fish especially ornamental fish with parasit and also the essential oil we will listen carefully from the export exposure of the speaker even though the term essential oil is something that has been very busy being discussed among scientists but maybe some of us are still less concerned concerned about its role in the physiology system hopefully with this event it can add insight to the audience as well and can be follow, follow up with more correct action i think uh, enough speak to uh, to begin our our webinar in this afternoon i say thank you very much nice uh, uh, nice uh, participant uh, enjoyed webinar in this afternoon. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Ibil Arbi. Before we start the seminar, we would like to invite all of the participants to join us for the photo session. Please turn on your camera to let us capture, capture your screen. Okay, ready for photo session? We will count until three. One, two, three, capture. Please turn on your camera, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three, capture. One, two, three, capture. Okay, thank you very much. After this, the seminar will be led by our moderator, Mr. Ahmad Musa. To Mr. Musa, please, time is yours. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mbak Bunga for allowing me to lead this uh, webinar. Uh, dear participants, allow me to share screen for you that today we are in ornamental fish and parasite webinar. Actually, this is the second international, international webinar that we conduct. Uh, the first is ornamental fish and head shock protein. And today we have topic ornamental fish and parasite. Thanks for Dr. Ildil Ardi for opening speech. And uh, this afternoon, we have uh, Mbak Joanna Firmino. Uh, I say Mbak Joanna because hopefully uh, she will be familiar with Indonesia. And hopefully also she could uh, join us uh, doing research in Indonesia in collaboration. Mbak Joanna uh, from IRTA, Technovic Spain, which will be will deliver uh, use of essential oils for parasite control in fish. And there is uh, Mbak Lili Soliha, Magister of Science. He, she is a research in Research Institute for Ornamental Fish Culture which will presenting type of parasite in ornamental fish. And there is Mbak Tuti Sumiati, Magister of Science. Uh, she is a research in Research Institute for Freshwater Aquaculture and Fisheries Extension, which will uh, presenting for us handling of parasite in freshwater fish. So, 
as the first speaker, uh, I will introduce Mbak Lily Solika. She is a researcher in Research Institute for Ornamental Fish Culture since 2008. Her research group is Ornamental Fish Nutrition and Health. Uh, she, is a, she stay in Depok City. She is a host in this city. Her education, uh, she took her bachelor in Gajamada University in Aquaculture uh, Department. And her magister was taken in Bogor Agricultural University also in Aquaculture. Uh, her current research is a feed additive in artificial food for ornamental fish. She has to Python with this uh, ID. So you may check the uh, Python ID and know what she has uh, made during her research in this uh, office. Uh, she has a lot of publication but couldn't mention uh, here. So to make time effective, I would like to invite Mbak Lily Soliha as a first presenter to give her speech. Or Mbak Lily Soliha, time is yours. Thank you, Pak Musa, as moderator. Uh, Wait a moment, please. I need uh, several time to share my screen. Ah, uh, sorry. Wait a moment, participant.
nanti gimana? Bisa langsung? I'm sorry. Oke, okay. let's start uh, the webinar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good afternoon for those who uh, of you who are in Indonesia and its surrounding. Uh, good morning for those of you who are in Spain or in Norway or uh, its surrounding. Uh, so today I will talk about parasite in ornamental fish. Um, Pay attention, please, and keep watching. As we know, there are freshwater ornamental fish and seawater ornamental fish. According to the FAO, the ornamental fish industry is generally segmented based on whether uh, fish are tropical or temperate uh, and freshwater or marine. Tropical, such as uh, gapis, neon tetra, cardinal tetra, temperate, such as koi, goldfish, uh, marine, such as nemo, lettersick, and so on. What is uh, ornamental fish? What is uh, ornamental fish? Uh, fishes that, that are kept in home aquariums or for aesthetic purposes are considered as ornamental fish. This fish encompass a wide variety of species of many shapes, of many shapes, size, and color. Ornamental fish are usually, usually kept in tanks or other aquarium system. So, uh, we can see in the picture, uh, this is the data from suhana.web.id. In the period of 2012 to 2019, uh, the export value of ornamental fish grew by an average of 0.75% per year. In 2012, the export value of ornamental fish reached uh, 21 million US dollar, while in 2019 it became 33 million US dollar or an increase 57.5 uh, compared to 2012. The export value of ornamental fish in 2019 was the highest in the period 2012-2019. This shows that the ornamental fish business has the opportunity to continue the develop properly. We go to the next slide. Uh, the data from PPS, Badan Pusat Statistik, uh, very new, newly data, uh, or the Central Statistic Agency show that in the first quarter of 2020, the value of ornamental fish export to China reached 966,000 US dollar, which means uh, a decrease 
decrease of 45.57 percent compared to them uh, compared to the same period 2019. Meanwhile, the export of value ornamental fish to the USA in the first quarter of 2020 reached at 179,000 US dollar or decreased by 21.43% compared to the same period in 2019. So, wow, very beautiful arwana here. Uh, the ornamental fish are valued by the by their beautiful color, their beautiful body shape, their attractiveness, and their size. And what is no less important is their health status. The healthy fish will have a higher price than unhealthy fish. Moreover, if the ornamental fish is in sick condition, the price will drop dramatically, even if it is not sold in the ornamental fish market. Um, do you want to know how much the arwana price in that slide? Yeah, according to the article that I read, its price reached uh, 875 million rupiah. Wow. How if your fish is sick? Yes, of course, you have to know what causes it. Is it a disease caused by infection of pathogens or due to, um, let's say, environmental change? If it, if it is caused by a parasitic infection, then you should know or seek information about parasite in fish. What the purpose? Looking for information related to parasite in fish. Of course, you can take precaution to prevent your fish from becoming infected by parasite. If the fish is infected with parasite, then you must know what kind of parasite so you can determine how to treat it. How to prevent? and how to treat the infected fish by the parasite will be delivered by the next dissenter. So stay tuned. Parasitic infection is also a primary infection that will be used as a trigger for secondary infection by other pathogens, such as bacteria and fungi. Generally negative effects due to uh, parasitic infection are, uh, we can see in the slide, uh, decreasing in production and productivity, and then decreasing competitiveness, and then it may also have an impact on food safety and endangered to sustainability cultivation. It's just information for you. There are eight groups of parasites that can cause parasitic disease in fish. Can be seen on the slide. These are the top five parasites that impact ornamental fish. Events in the field, there are many types of parasites that impact ornamental fish but injuring the fish and even, even killing the fish. I choose the five types with the most common cases of infection. Okay, the first one, Ichthyopterius multifiliis. It is unicellular, ciliate, and most pathogenic parasite of fish also known protozoan as ich, causing agent of ichthyopteriasis known as white spot. 
white spot disease of fish. The parasite has a direct life cycle with no intermediate host. Ichthyopterius multifilly is, is an important freshwater teleos pathogen that often leads to significant economic losses economic losses to the aquaculture industry. We can see in the picture, what a pity the fish is fully of white spot. <clears throat> the life cycle begins a free swimming infective stage known as Teron. Human contact with the host start to develop into the parasitic tropon stage. Tropon reach a suitable size, exit its host, and insist on a substrate turn into tomon stage. Within the seas, the tomon divided by a series of 10 to 11 division to produce small termites, which break through the seas wall to become terons again. Once terons become lodged in the skin and the life cycle is complete. Let's see the following video. These are gills of fish infected with each parasite that are observed under a microscope. Take a look. That is the tropon phase that comes out of the gill lamellae and then becomes the tomon phase. The termonas reproduce themselves very quickly, just a matter in hours uh, become a teron. I skip. The second one, Dactylogyrus species. Dactylogyrus is a monogenian and well known as a gill fluke. Fluke attach themselves to the body and its skin, gill tissue, and blood. So, according to Ramudu et al., 2013, the prevalence of dactylogyrus, it reached 83.45%. In fact, the Indian major carbs. Adult flock, fluke live as parasite on the gill filament. Free swimming ciliated larvae called Oncomiracidium must find a host within six to eight hours to survive. This is the histopathology of fish gills infested with dactylogyrus. Uh, I cite from Sudaryatma et al. 2012. We can see together for uh, preparat A, B, C, and D. A is a native preparat. B, C, D uh, stain with hematocylin eosin. Uh, so, in the A preparat, the anchor used by dactylogyrus to attach to the gill lamellae. We can see, okay, and then on preparat B, 
there is a hyperplasia of the cells gill lamellar epithelium and the preparasi secondary lamellar fusion preparasi we we can see the telangiectasis what is the telangiectasis telangiectasis is a pillar cell damage result in accumulation of erythrocyte in the blood vessel and also dilated blood vessels especially at the edge lamellae the third one argulus argulus is a loss like a parasite having flat body generally called the fish loss one of the most widespread crustacean ectoparasite of freshwater fish in the world two large sucker for attack for attaching to the skin of its host the color of fish loss rings from light green to greenish yellow and brown if parasite is well fed its color will be darker due to filling the blood of the host this is the life cycle of argulus after mating the female deposits the eggs on suitable substrate such as aquatic plant the eggs hatch develop and infect free fresh host and metamorphose to adult the fourth lernia in this situation that is caused by the development of secondary infection exacerbated by stress osmoregulatory failure and respiratory impairment according to to file at all 2017 it does not have so much effect on the growth performance of catala catala but affects the skin histology causes ulceration and bursting of skin layers this is the life cycle of argulus the fifth trichodina This parasite is major problem in freshwater cultivation in Indonesia especially in the seed phase because this parasite can cause economic losses stunted growth and longer maintenance period Trichodina has a very big role in fish farming because this parasite reduces the immune system of fish and causes the secondary infection Trichodina is small mound do not cause serious effect but severe infection of this parasite will cause open scars on the external body of the fish this scar will become a factor for carrying other more dangerous pathogen Trichodina infect by attaching to the epithelial layer of fish with the help of a sharp membrane tip after attaching the parasite immediately circulate damaging the cells around the site of attachment eating the destroyed epithelial cells and causing serious irritation in an environment with a fairly high parasite population generally when the organic matter content is when the organic matter content is high enough this condition become more dangerous 
economic losses due to ectoparasite infestation not only result from direct harm to the fish, but also from this big human and secondary bacterial infection. Countless pounds of fish have been affected because of this parasite. So beware of parasitic infection. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oke, okay. thank you Mbak Lili Sonika for the presentation. Now we have the second presenter uh, which will be provided by Batuti Sunyati. Batuti Sumiati is a researcher from Research Institute for Freshwater Aquaculture and Fisheries Extension. Now she ha she is a senior researcher and current research is a parasitic disease control in snakehead and giant prawns. She has at least seven patents uh, till today and one patent already registered, which is the ID of the pattern you can see together. Uh, she took her back, uh, bachelor in aquaculture of uh, Bogor Agricultural University, and her magister was in also in uh, Bogor Ag Ag Agriculture University uh, in aquaculture uh, department. Uh, how are you, Batuti? Okay, are you ready? Insyaallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mbak Tuti. And Mbak Tuti, time is yours. Okay. Thank you, Pak Musa. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, good afternoon and thanks for attending. And nice to see you here. Hopefully, all of you stay excited uh, after listening the, to the explanation from Miss Lily about the types of parasites in ornamental fish. Now we are going to discuss about the handling of parasites in freshwater fish. Please. Okay.
Thank you, Kang Sam. Uh, okay, I'm sorry for not coming. Thank you. Um, there are several things I will share. For the first, I'll start my presentation from general introduction. And the, for the second, about this is on pressure surface. The third is about parasites control on pressure surface. And the last is uh, about concretion. Next. Aquaculture is uh, the process of breeding organism, starting from production process, product handling, uh, until marketing, and certainly a business must be profitable. Therefore, all process that are carried out must be healthy, include good stock and fry, water and the environment, feed and nutrition, and of course, uh, we have to attention for health management. Uh, office. So it becomes a healthy aquaculture business. And talking about uh, aquaculture, it also uh, talk about fish, aquatic environment, and pathogens. Uh, as we know, the mechanism of this disease occurs when there is an imbalance between fish, environment, and uh, pathogens. So the environment that are suitable for the growth and reproduction of uh, aquatic animals are also hospitable to potential disease agents such as parasites. It is no wonder then that fish mortalities and abnormality associate with parasite as a disease agent and indicating their importance in aquaculture. Next, there are several cases of infectious disease in freshwater fish, uh, some caused by bacteria such as Aeromonas, Streptococcus, Mycobacterium, uh, Edwardsiella, etc., and mm. caused by fungi, uh, viral, and some are caused by parasitic agents. The case of this disease, of course, results, result in losses in aquaculture industry. Next. Next, Mas. Apart from causing mortality, parasitic disease reduces the performance of fish and thereby reducing their economic value. Pathogen for significant economic losses to the aquaculture of catfish, carp, and tilapia, and also for ornamental fishes. In relation to the aquaculture industry and its economic value, there is an estimate of the economic loss of freshwater aquaculture industry due to this is according to National Strategy for Aquatic Animal Health and Environment in the period of 2015 until 2020, the value of losses due to disease caused by parasites in multi-species of fish with a mortality rate about 25 to uh, a hundred percent and annual loss, loss estimation about 2,500 million rupees. Next. So this disease 
that are infectious and non-infectious. The infectious disease generally contagious and the parasite disease in this is a contagious disease and harmful. The study of parasite involves an understanding of certain existing relationship in a particular population. Symbiosis on living together is a relationship that benefits one or both parties. However, parasitism is a one-way relationship in which one party parasites given on and benefit from the other partner as a host biochemically and physiologically. Next. Parasitic diseases are one of the most serious problems in feces, though not of much concern among the wild beasts, because in most cases, no significant harm appears to be caused to them. However, parasitic parasites often cause serious disease outbreak of among farm fish. With the exception of cases of mass mortality, mortality caused by outbreak of parasite, assessment of the effects of parasite infection in natural fish population is particularly difficult because of the recent of predators or scavengers which rapidly remove moribund or dead fish. And majority of the parasites disease belong to three major groups. Arthropod, being dominated by crustacean, helmin, and protozoan. Next. From the information regarding the estimated financial losses, so we have to make the strategy to control the disease problem, especially for parasitic disease. There are several methods of disease control in freshwater fish, including ecotherapy. There are manipulation of water quality parameter, aquaculture engineering, is filtration, apply recirculation system, increase water temperature, and uh, we use chemotherapy. There are antibiotic or chemicals, and the last uh, application of biotherapy to reduce biological stressor, immune therapy, application of probiotic, bioremediacy, seed supplement or additive, genetically, and phytotherapy. Next. There are several preventive measures and as general principle of prevention there are upon preparation. The optimization of natural environmental condition is the main precondition. How to ensure the good health condition of stock during the rearing period? This infection is of a big importance in prevention and elimination of this disease. Preventive disinfection protects the fish stock against pathogens. Hygiene of environmental condition for fish is improved by this way. Focal disinfection is performed for control of the focus of dangerous fish diseases. And for water quality, underground water uh, are the most suitable water sources free of pathogens and these sources are limited for hatcheries and for other special fish culture until at present. The surface water from rivers and channel is used as the sources of info water 
in most cases. And in this situation, treatable filters can be partially reduce the number of invasion stage of parasites in flow water. Above all, when supplying smaller reservoirs with intensive culture, chemical treatment in inflow water of inflow water is an emergency arrangement with oven and reasonable parallel effects. Of course, disinfection of the water entering fish culture unit by UV radiation is not still a usual way, although it can be considered as a simple method how to destroy viruses, bacteria, fungi, etc. And uh, the fish, of course, um, may uh, pay attention uh, to the prevention. This principle means above all the transfer of pathogens by uncontrolled transfer of fish and spawn. The transfer of fish with unknown healthy condition is to be avoided in principle and some viral and bacterial and other uh, pathogen can be transferred also by spawn. Next. Parasitic disease in the crustacean group is still a problem for freshwater fish. There are Argulus and Lerne. Several steps can be done. Uh, there are fish quarantine for uh, fish infected, use of filter, uh, add salt solution for control, and there are some chemical can be used for therapy. Um, and until now, uh, once a product is still quite effective in reducing Argus and Lerna infestation. In addition, the management of water quality, the total load of organic matter in the media must be considered. And of course, the environment must be hygiene and attention must also be paid to point preparation uh, disinfection with lime or chlorine, water quality, health management with density and feed. Next. Next. Okay. And for helming, there are no effective uh, treatment, no effective, uh, but and nematodes is uh, very difficult to eradicate, but uh, with the added salt solution can be reduced uh, the parasite, and we can use some chemical for therapy, uh, and we can add a salt solution. Uh, some chemical include amalactin uh, as uh, anti-helmin, copper sulfate, methylene blue potassium permanganate and formalin. As the degenerian complete its life cycle involving at least a molluscan host, so we controlling of molluscan host in the culture facility and would reduce the transmission cycle of the parasites. Next. And the most common protogen parasite observed in fish culture system are also some obligate amoebic, fragilate, and microsporidium, esporozoa, and are also noticed ichthyopterius, multifilius, and odinium are obligate parasites, and it needs special handling to break its life cycle because it cannot use the chemical. For infected fish, we must quarantine for at least seven days uh, and transfer infected stock in dry parasite free tank for two to three times at a three day interval. Increase water temperature to 13 degrees Celsius for six hour daily for three to five days. 
exhaust solution and for emergency situation we can use formaldehyde by implementing very strict rules next and for microsporidians it is difficult to eradicate because the spore can leave warriors in the sediment in the digestive tracts of fish eating animals and are very tolerant of freezing temperatures for infected fish we have to quarantine and some efforts that can be done are use of pen filter ultraviolet irradiation of rearing water disinfection of culture facilities using light and chlorine and next so what about biosecurity biosecurity is a system that integrated procedures policies and implemented implementation to create suitable sustainable aquaculture and cultural competence and this is the most ideal method of several existing methods but the question is can be implemented in all aquaculture system so in general in generally parasitic disease impact in pride uh, when the fry in hatchery and the application of biosecurity in the hatchery is relatively easy in handling parasites um, next and there are several uh, medicine plants that we have tried as, fight, uh, as phytotherapy for parasitic disease in fish including turmeric rhizome uh, able to reduce the large number of monogen parasites in catfish uh, Morinda citri folia can be used to control agulus and learning. Garlic can be used to minimize infestation of Ichthyopterius multifilius, Tricodina, and Argulus. Uh, and papaya leaves through feed or can be spread to ponds and can reduce uh, Ichthyopterius multifilius. And the paper battle, apart from being effective in controlling if the obturus is also effective to reduce the intensity of the monogenian parasites. Next. The effectiveness of medis medical medicinal plants as antiparasitic has not been widely studied and in our study, the results show that the addition of herbs in the form of uh, papaya leaves, pepper battle, and noni was able to reduce the number of parasites in catfish up to zero individuals. Uh, however, uh, the addi addition of turmeric rhizome can reduce the number of parasites the most compared to other herbs. Okay, next. And from the effort to control all these disease, both prevention and handling, there are several things related to this health management issue. <clears throat> there are related to global issues such as uh, use of chemical or antibiotic in fisheries production. And of course, it's related to biodiversity, microbial uh, resistance, uh, antibiotic residue, and uh, issue of environment. Uh, good aquaculture practices, uh, food safety and security, non transgenic and traceability. Next. And as the conclusion is, Parasitic disease is one of the most serious problems in fish, and it is possible to control by various methods to reduce or avoid more losses. That's all, and thank you for attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you Mbak Tuti Sumiati. Uh, so from the first and the second presenter, uh, we could see the linkage that uh, there are uh, at least um, Mbak Lili mentioned that there are top five parasite in ornamental fish and then Mbak Tuti Sumiati already explained about how to control or handling the parasite in freshwater fish. Uh, hopefully all the audience could see the beneficial of this uh, presentation. Now we have the last presenter uh, for today. This is uh, Mbak Joanna Firmino. Mbak Joanna, are you with us? Hi, good afternoon. Ah, okay. I'm here. Good afternoon, Mbak Joanna. <laughs> How are you? Good. Good, okay. Uh, before we start, I would like to introduce Mbak Joanna. Uh, she is a aquaculture PhD student uh, from Technovid. Uh, aquaculture PhD student currently studying the mechanism underlying the mucosal response of fish to immunostimulant feed additive in the pike again ectoparasite. Looking into the insight of the physiological and immune responses of aquaculture relevant species to environmental friendly strategy with the objective of developing nutraceutical solution as an alternative to chemicals and antibiotics. So from the uh, uh, earlier speaker, we see there are uh, using chemical like uh, formalin or antibiotic. Now by Joanna Firmino trying to explain about use of essential oil for parasite control in fish. But Joanna, was a bachelor from Higher Institute of Agronomy, University of Lisbon. So Mbak Joanna is a Portuguese, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, Mbak Joanna is Portuguese, <laughs> Portuguese. Uh, working in Spain. Working and now, in Spain. Today, you are in Norway. I'm in Norway currently, ah, okay. yes. So, <laughs> Portuguese working in Spain, but giving presentation from Norway and her magister uh, from Faculty of Science and Technology, University of Algarve. Okay, um, Mbak Joanna, time is yours. Okay, Musa, thank you so much for inviting me for uh, this webinar. Thank you very yes. much. I'm going to share my presentation. And... You can see it? Yes, yes no? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's it. So as Musa was saying, I'm a PhD student. I'm working on uh, my research is on immunity and nutrition for aquaculture. So today I will present you some of the results of our research. As it was referred also, I'm currently an employee from Technovit. From those that, that, that don't uh, know the company, Technovit is a company that is specialized in the development of nutraceuticals for animal production. So I will start uh, under this context. It's not. Okay. Yes. Under this context, well, the nutraceutical solutions or the functional feed additives, as you can uh, heard this kind of terms before, uh, they are used for different objectives. Mainly, they are used for the promotion of growth, uh, stress relief, the increase of the flesh quality, increase of the antioxidant capacity, um, the improvement of the gut health, but also and mainly uh, for immunity. There are a lot of, there is a lot of research on immunity and why uh, the targeting, targeting immunity is so important um, because of the conditions of the aquaculture systems. We all know that our fish, and this is one of the subjects of this webinar, they are um, in constantly challenged with bacteria, virus and parasites. And 
they are all a consequence of the, the, the aquaculture. So it's really difficult not have them. But as I was saying, um, the parasites, for instance, is one of the examples of those uh, immunity challenge that fish have uh, in the daily basis. Um, they are favored, their develop, development are favored by the, the aquaculture sy the system. And why? Mainly because due to poor quality, um, the water quality, because of the intensification, high working with high densities of fish. So all of this will favor and will increase the dispersion of parasites and other um, infections. So this is one problem. But there, trying to fix this problem, we have another one because um, it's the use of chemicals. So the chemical treatments, they may be effective in controlling or killing the parasites, but they lead us to other secondary problems. And those problems is uh, the increase of re the, the resistance of pathogens to those chemicals and antibiotics. We have also the, the environmental impact, the negative impact on the environment and even uh, human health issues. So when we are applying those chemicals to big productions, they are humans that are applying those products and in permanent contact with those problems. So they are uh, uh, trying to fix one problem. We have another one and would be the use of chemicals. So I'm not saying that we cannot use the chemicals. Of course, they are there to help us to, to kill the pathogens, but there is a need of controlling it from the beginning. So it will be more than the word control. I prefer to use the word prevention. So for this, we need to develop, and there is a lot of research um, going on in this sense, uh, to develop long-term sustainable tools to prevent the, um, the parasites and the other disease instead of being of being always killing them and treating them with chemicals. So with the development of this kind of strategies, we can reduce the use of uh, some chemicals or even replace them totally. One example of these long-term uh, strategies could be the functional feed additives and the development of nutraceutical solutions. So there is a lot of um, additives and ingredients that are available in the market, such organic acids, some prebiotics, probiotics, amino acids, vitamins. But my, pr my presentation will focus more in the phytogenics and plant extracts in which are included the essential oils. So the essential oils are not no, they, they are not novelty. So everyone heard about essential oils. There are a lot of research on essential oils. They are widely known because of their antimicrobial, antiparasitic and antioxidative characteristics and potential. So they are widely used. Um, the problem with essential oils is that they usually lead to different results. So we can see sometimes they work for some species or they work in some times and then they, they stop working. There are some controversy in the use of essential oils. And I think it is essentially because um, of the strategies to apply them. So the, the way that we apply the essential oils, there is also the need of standardize uh, the protocols of the application of the use in, and it's used in, in, the, in the feed additives. It's different also talking about um, essential oils, if they are from natural sources, which are those sources, the sources, the, the origin of the plants, the plant batches, or if they are synthetic. So there are a lot of questions that can be raised when you use essential oils. And there is another question and it is, okay, we see that some phytogenics and essential oils can work, but there is poor information in why they work and how they work in fish when they are applied. So this is what leads to what I'm going to present you. And it's uh, some results from uh, our research where we used a microencapsulated uh, additive with essential oils of garlic, carvacrol and thymol. Um, the commercial product um, is named Arotec G. And I'm going to present you the results of this product in our latest research. 
so this work was a part of a, a European and Spanish national project with the, the participation of a lot of research centers and universities. So it's just a, a part, one of the objectives of this big project. And the objective was how to control this nasty little parasite. And for the ones that don't know it, it's pericotyl chrysophry. It's a monogenean. And it's one of the most important diseases that occurs in the Mediterranean um, aquaculture. So this parasite is pretty similar. Or it has a lot of similarities with the dactylogirus that was presented previously uh, in the other speech. It's an hematophagus, so it feeds on, on blood and mucus, and it affects mostly, not specific, but mostly the gilt head cibrim, Spirus aurata. So uh, gilt head cibrim is one of the most important fish co cultured in the, med in the Mediterranean. It's not an ornamental, it's a, a fish for human consumption. Um, and this parasite, it has, uh, it has this host as a specific host. And this is, it would be the, the macroscopic, as you can see in the slide, the macroscopic appearance of this parasite, this monogenean, it at attaches to the gills and sucks on blood and its mucus and it's pretty damaging for the, for the, the sebrim, it provokes severe anemia and it has a considerable effects on it. So this would be um, a, a scheme of the, um, the life cycle of spericotyl. The adult phase um, will be the, the most um, damaging one for the, the fish because of the high number of clamps. We can see like this tail, the, like a, a tail like, it has a, a lot of clamps, like anchor-like uh, structures that will attach to the gills and will provoke a lot of damage besides the, the feeding uh, behavior. The adult, we can see that inside the adult, we can see some eggs. The adult pregnant uh, parasite will release the eggs into the water column. Those eggs are considered the passive infective stage and why they are an infective stage particularly in the aquaculture system, this is of major um, concern because the X has this uh, projection, like uh, an anchor-like projection that allows them to attach to the cage and to the biofolding of the cage. So those eggs are not releasing, released outside the cage. They, they stay really near to the, the host and it um, favors a lot the, the cycle. So this is a, a problem of these um, parasites in aquaculture is that they have this strategy to be really near to the host. So after this eggs hatch into Oncomyracidia larvae, this is a free swimming ciliated larvae, and it will be the active infective stage. So they are already near the cage and they will sw swim and start to attach again to the fish gills. So we have here the, the post larvae it will be the, the start of the development of the clams and at the end it will develop into juveniles and adults again. So as I said, this, is, this represents of the most significant diseases in the Mediterranean because it has a really high prevalence, more than 85% of prevalence in both, in both fries and adults. It can lead to mortality even directly or indirectly by secondary infections. And it represents more than 20% of the production cost. So it's a significant uh, issue. And that's why it led us to do this research. So our study, it's basically, basically divided in two phases. One part of so the first part, it's a nutritional essay where we applied for 65 days um, the feed additive containing the essential oils, the Arotec G. And we did the same with the control diet. So we had the, the, a group with essential oils and a group with a control diet. We fed the fish. And in the second part, after those 65 days, we did a cohabitation challenge for 39 days. So this cohabitation challenge, here there is a schema really 
simplified scheme of this cohabitation challenge. Basically, after the nutritional challenge, we mixed the fish from the nutritional challenge, the ones fed with Artec gene and also for the control diet, we mix them with fish that were naturally infected with the, um, with the parasite, with spericotile. Okay? We obtained fish that were infected from sea cages. We, uh, we, we had a stock of fish infected with the parasite. And from this stock, we mixed them in a proportion from two to one with the fish that came from the nutritional assay. So to see if the period that they were being uh, fed with the experimental diet had an impact on the infection, on the transmission of the parasite. So I want to start from the end and because this is the first question, did it work after all? And yes, it worked. It reduced 78% of the parasite load so I want to say this is uh, data from the fish, from the nutritional assay. So not the fish that were already parasite, naturally parasited. No, the ones that received the parasite from the, um, the cohabitation challenge. So we observe that we have a reduction in the transmission of the parasite because we have a significant, significant uh, reduction in the juveniles and adults mainly. Um, that would be the, the, the ones that are attached to gills. So this is really promising uh, results and really nice results that we have, uh, meaning that the product work and it's effective against this monogenian. But now it lies the question why it works and how it works. So for this, what we did was a, transcrip a, transcrip a transcriptional analysis of the gills. So the gills has the, the main tissue, the target tissue for this monogenian. We wanted to analyze and to see the gene transcription uh, of this tissue. So what we obtained was um, 70, 759 differentially expressed genes, which means that we have this amount of genes that are differentially expressed in comparison with the control group. So most of them, are upregulated in comparison with the control group. So the transcriptional machinery, it's being altered by the presence of these essential oils in the diet. So now we wanted to know the biolog biological significance of the regulation of those genes, because it's a lot of genes, and we want to know what does it mean to have those genes up or down regulated. So for this, we performed an enrichment analysis that gave us some clues about the biological process and physiological process that are going on um, in the gills. And what we obtained was the activation of the biogenesis, the protein synthesis. We have the activation of vesicular uh, transport, mainly uh, through exocytosis. Uh, those genes are mainly related with the immune system and particularly with neutrophils degranulation. So what's going on in our gills is the activation of effector leukocytes inside. As you know, as you might know, the neutrophils are immune cells from the innate immune system that are uh, recognized by the, um, the possession for having those granules that have antibacterial and other uh, active molecules that can fight against pathogens. So they release those granules by exocytosis and this helps of killing effectively uh, some pathogens. But you might also say, so if there is the degranulation or the activation of this kind of cells, as they have um, these granules, it can be damaging for the tissue itself because uh, releasing those granules, there are a lot of the, there are also the release of a lot of reactive oxygen species and it promotes a big inflammation. So they are characterized those cells by an inflammatory response. So it could be damaging for the cells, you can say. The thing is, the really interesting thing is that we also found some markers, some gene markers 
that are uh, coding for anti antioxidant proteins and anti-inflammatory anti cytokines. So this means that besides the neutrophil activation, we also have a protective antioxidative response and anti-inflammatory response during this um, additive effect on the gills. So it's like a immune balanced response to the additive that could be uh, playing a part in the, um, the decrease in parasites that we saw. We also perform estochemical analysis of the gills. And what we observed was an increase in glycoproteins rich in sialic acids in the mucosal cells of the gills. So those sialic acids, they are used or they, are, they have a function in the, the mucous cells as decoys for some molecules and pathogens. So some molecules or toxins and some pathogens, they attach to those glycoproteins, to those structures, and the mucous cells release those structures into the mucus. In a way, they release those structures that with the, the pathogens attached. So it's a way of renewing this uh, layer of the cell for the pathogens not to attach or enter the cell. Okay, so it's a defense mechanism from the, the mucosal tissues. So if you have uh, an increase of these uh, sialic acids, and we also observed an increase in the size of the mucous cells, we observed the hypertrophy of the, the mucous cells. So it might indicate that we have an increased renewal of the mucus secretion. And this is um, a phenomenon that usually happens with, when we apply uh, essential oils, essential oils, uh, they are recognized more in the intestinal mucos, uh, mucosal tissue for leading to a, a, a slight inflammatory response that promotes the mucus renewal. So this would be a way of protecting um, the host as the mucus and the, the mucosal um, layer. It's one of the first line defense of the, of the fish. And so we saw that it works for um, this monogenean. Uh, we saw that the response that uh, it has in the gills, but uh, could it work for other things or other tissues or other pathogens? So that was the reason we also performed the analysis, the, transcrip the transcriptional analysis of the skin. And what we obtained was also a vesicular transport. We have the activation of the secretory pathway regulation, but this time not so much um, leading to exocytosis, but more um, related with endocytosis. Okay, so not the release of products, but the entering of products in the cell. So this is very interesting because it's a completely different uh, response than what we obtained from the, the gills. We have the activation of vacuoles in particular and lysosomes. So if you are related with those, um, those terms, the lysosomes are uh, vesicles that are present inside cells that are used to kill uh, pathogens. So they have uh, lysozyme and other antibacterial proteins inside and they are um, a defense mechanism for um, endocytic uh, organism. So they have a critical role in phagocytosis as well. So, and that's why, and uh, according to a lot of gene markers that we were checking one by one, we strongly believe that this response is uh, strongly related with phagocytic cells. So we believe that we have the activation uh, of phagocytic cells since those lysosomes and vacuoles, they usually are um, really related with this kind of cells. So this is pretty interesting. It, it wouldn't be, um, it's also the stimulation of an immune response, but a different one. Um, we didn't have any parasitical challenge uh, for this tissue. What we did was a challenge, a bacterial challenge in vitro. So what we did was to collect the mucus from the fish fed the essential oils and the fish fed the control diet. And we cultivated some pathogenic bacteria 
in it to see the behavior of the, the pathogenic bacteria in the mucus. So what we uh, observe for, is for like E. coli, for instance, it's not a fish specific uh, pathogen. It didn't significantly change the growth patterns of this bacteria. But then when uh, cultivating um, Pseudomonas angeliceptica or Vibrio angularum that are uh, bacteria specific for fish, we saw a significant decrease uh, in the growth of the bacteria in the mucus of the fish fed essential oils. So this means that the essential oils um, are in some way increasing the antibacterial capacity of the mucus. So this is really interesting because before touching the skin, they already have the mucus that have an increased protective capacity. So it's uh, the first line of defense, it's being uh, fortified by this additive. Coming back to the transcriptional analysis, we detected uh, some of the genes that could be responsible for this response in mucus, since a lot of them have been referred in previous works as potential um, as having a potential antimicrobian uh, action. We have like catepsins, we have also TNF alpha related proteins, we have complement related proteins and so on. So the, the combining of these two, it would be really interesting, although we, don't, we, we didn't have the, the, the opportunity of doing this challenge. But um, if we combine an increased phagocytosis um, capacity that those phagocytes are able to phagocyte and kill small pathogens like bacteria or even uh, unicellular parasites. So if you combine this increased protection of the mucus plus this phagocyte capacity, maybe it could be working for other parasites such each, for instance, since they are protozoans. And so I will leave it here open for further maybe collaborations. It would be really interesting to check if it works for other parasites. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. And we have still work in progress under this sense. And if you have any question, feel free to ask. Okay. Thank you, Mbak Joanna, for nice presentation. Uh, so today we already hear uh, three presenter, which present. Uh, ornamental fish in uh, parasite in ornamental fish and then how to handle the parasite uh, in freshwater fish and the last speaker speak about uh, the use of essential oil uh, for uh, handling uh, parasite especially the product is arotic g uh, so there are a lot of question in the chat room and also from youtube but i couldn't read all but at least we read one for from satria he is a discuss discuss fish breeder uh, question for bulili i need to know how to diagnose the disease from the symptoms because sometimes some disease have a similar similar symptom. For Bututi, Bututi, for Bututi, for Bututi. Uh, in the BRB module or module online, Halal Shooting Wonder and the Mac, far more easy to take the, the decision when treat the sick fish and how to use the antibiotic itself. As you know, antibiotic will be a suffered bar someday, you know, why to use those. And the last one, my one. 
As you know, uh, this is supposed to be using the revenue boost to give the nutrition for the larvae in the first space after the age. So, what we are doing that effectively to increase the value of the parent test to increase the immune system in the larvae is the essential or suitable for those. Okay, for the first, but Oke, okay, thank you Pak Musa. Ah, Rizit from Satria. Oke, okay. I need to know how to diagnose the disease from the symptoms because sometimes some diseases have a similar symptoms. Symptoms. Uh, thank for your question, uh, Pak Satria or Mas Satria. Ya. Yeah. Sometimes uh, we found similar symptom in our fish, but I think uh, as a fish breeder, uh, you have more encouraged to to seek the uh, what cause is it? Yeah. Because sometimes uh, not only uh, one infection, but it may be uh, co-infection. For example, uh, the first, the primary infection caused by the parasite and then triggered to secondary infection caused by the bacteria. So when you see when you found your fish, oh, so this fish, uh, what kind of uh, its illness? It is caused by it caused by parasite or by bacteria. Yeah, it's common. So I uh, I suggest you. Uh, if you are discuss fish breeder, so you have to you have more encourage uh, to read or to discuss with the pathologist like like this. Uh, sorry, Pak Musa, may I go to another question? Okay. Uh. Yeah, maybe give to Bututi first. Oh, okay, okay. Bututi. Okay. Thank you, Pansa. The question is, if the baby have a close or not to online like how I don't know. I don't know where they have a close. I've heard those uh, to uh, apa? for Education. until now I think not yet have a tools how was that maybe for uh, parasite hmm? for uh, freshwater research institute ah, uh, In uh, Ripa Ripa V, uh, not yet uh, have uh, the tools uh, online tools um, for but uh, from PGA Directorate General Aquaculture, I think uh, have a application. Uh -huh. I think, but I'm not sure. But the And the use of antibiotics. Antibiotic. Um, there's a apa ya, peraturan Menteri Kelautan uh, number one Permen KP 2019 about uh, fish medicine. Um, and then.
there are some antibiotics uh, some antibiotic allow to therapy Uh, there are um, from the group tetracycline uh, this type of uh, antibiotic allow for treatment for tetracycline oxytetracycline and tetracycline I think it's I think that's uh, the type of antibiotic. That's how it's done. Do you read the question? Okay, so the question would be. As we know, discus fish using their mucus to give nutrition for the larvae in the first phase after etched. So what the additive uh, that effective to increase value, uh, the parent's mucus, to increase the immune system in the larvae? Is essential oil su su uh, sustainable for those? So there is here uh, two parts, I think, that uh, of the question. If is the additive increase the value of the parent's mucus, for sure, because if uh, we obtained those results in the bacterial culture, co-culture, so we have to imagine that bacteria, they are everywhere. So they are not just in vitro because we culture them. Bacteria will be everywhere and pathogenic ones also, but they develop into disease just if they are in higher amounts. So if we are adding those kind of additives that have a increased potential antibacterial activity, what we can um, think and know is that this mucus will have less pathogenic bacteria than other mucus, naturally, because bacteria are in the water. So this mucus, from a, a principle, will have less load of, back, uh, of uh, pathogenic bacteria. So mm -hmm. the mucus that will be uh, used by the, um, the, the, fry, the larvae stage would be, a, I will not say a purer, more pure mucus, but it will be a less contaminated mucus by, by potentially pathogenic bacteria. So larvae will not be consuming some bacteria that can be um, bad for them. So in that sense, it can be increasing the value. Another thing is increase directly the immune system of the larvae. Uh, in that sense, we cannot say for sure because we don't know if the essential oils are being exuded to the, um, the mucus. We don't have, there, there, are, there were some references in the past from other uh, research groups that they suggested that it can be possible when we feed um, fish with essential oils that those compounds can be exuded from the fish and be found in the mucus, but we didn't uh, have this data in particular. So we don't know if feeding on the mucus, the larvae would be feeding or on essential oils also, but they will be feeding in the in enriched mucus with uh, immune proteins and antimicrobial peptides and with a less load of pathogen, this is for sure. Okay. So, actually, uh, this may be asked about the RTP. It's also so, uh, suitable to increase the uh, parent mucus or to increase the immune system in the lab. It is the question. Is it the same thing? Uh, Hello? Yes, yes. So this is also the same answer for uh, if if we ask for the RTG. Is it correct? I, I cannot hear you. I am uh 
hearing double. So, yes. Uh, even if he asks about the essential oil, actually, uh, he might the, he means the focus on Arabic key. So it is the same answer. It is? I'm sorry. I, I cannot hear you very well. Oh, sorry. Musa, Musa, I think you have the mic of both screens on. That is why we're hearing you double. Please mute the other speaker. Mute all the, unless me. Okay, so. Now it's better. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. So, I mean, mm -hmm. this also the same answer if he if we ask about the erotic G. Yes. Is uh, it I'm, yes, it would be the same okay. thing because. When we refer to essential oils, it, it's really, it really depends because there are people, and I saw some questions in the chat, they use them also yeah. as bath treatment. So here when I, I talk about essential oils, I'm talking about what I, I know from my research and it's Arotec G. Yeah. I cannot uh -huh. say for other things. Okay. And actually there are a lot of questions, but uh, we should, uh, I choose the most uh, related with our topic question. So there is a question from uh, Robert to Bulili. How long the contact duration between uh, pathogen or parasite and its host that could cause disease? Uh, is there any parasite that not affect the ornamental fish color quality? Uh, no, it's a private question so directly to not into how long the contact duration between the parasite and it causes the good cause disease. Uh, and then, is there any parasite that not affect the ornamental color of the body? Please. Okay, I will try to answer the question. Thanks to Robert. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, the moderator do not show the <laughs> do not show the type of the question here. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, how how long how Yes, okay. No, I start from the second question. Uh, is there a parasite that can uh, decrease or break or disturb the color of the ornamental fish? Correct, Musa. For the second, is there uh, any parasite that uh, not 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 affect the color quality? I think. All of the parasite uh, may change the color of the ornamental fish. So we have to to be careful of this uh, pathogen, even it's a parasite, but parasite uh, proof. Uh, lose the quality of our fish. Indeed, uh, ornamental fish. I think almost all, all, all of the parasite may change the brightness or the quality uh, of our fish. And the first question, from Robert? The, the contact duration. Contact duration? Contact duration between parasite and host. 
Ya. According to the pathogens, according to the causative agent, some pathogens can infect only in hours, but another pathogens, another parasite can infect in a day, like, uh, what is it? Uh, one question from, from, I don't know, uh, from Ibu Wiwi, BP, BAT, Mandi Angin, uh, for Ichthyopterius multifiliis, how how long the cycles the life cycle of it it can be three three days until three weeks or more according to the temperature according to the condition of the water quality so we cannot adjust uh, this is this is cause will finish in maybe a week. No, according to the pathogens or the causative agents and according to the uh, temperature or water quality. This is it. Okay. Thank you. And to Bu Tuti. Do the fishes that already infected by parasites are safe to eat? Uh, which kind of parasite is uh, still uh, safe to eat if it uh, infected, uh, infected the fish? And the second question from Ulan Nasrina. What is the physical differences between infectious and non-infectious disease? Okay. Musa, we can still hear you double. Um, yeah, now. Perfect. Do the fishes that already infected by parasite are safe to eat? Mm -hmm. Well, it is a uh, harmful to it after it it is it is infected by parasite. The the question is a uh, in a uh, private chat. Oh, okay. Sorry, it is. Apa tadi? Would you repeat the question? Do do the fishes that already infected by parasite mm -hmm. are safety to eat? Oh. Uh, if uh, we cook uh, well done, so it uh, will destroy the parasite. Uh, and I think it, it's safe for, uh, for human. Um, uh, human infection are invariably linked to the ingestion uh, to the through the consumption in raw or undercooked fish product. So if uh, we cook uh, well done, it is safe uh, for human. That's all. Okay. And to Mbak Joanna, there is a message from Ibu Angela. She said that at recent, uh, our research institute for freshwater aquaculture or Rifafe Bogor has collaboration with IRD France, Institute for Research and Development France for essential oils such as Saturaya Motana and Menta Arviera for antimicrobial agent, 
So it's welcome for you if you're interested to join for research collaboration. Thank you. And the question for Mbak Joanna. Did you try to use phytotherapy by immersion method? If yes, are there effectively are similar or one is better than another? Or every method have certain condition? Thank you. Well, I will start with Angela. Thank you very much with the proposal. Yeah. We are always uh, available for collaboration. We always want to, to collaborate. So I already uh, took the data that you put in the comments. So we can get in, in touch and see what we can do in the future. It would be interesting. Thank you. And um, now related with the question, and I saw that there is a lot of questions about it with, uh, with the yes. difference between uh, the bath treatments and the dietary treatments. Yes. So yes. Um, I think one of the big differences is that um, essential oils have the, the most effective compounds of the essential oils are volatile. It means that they are evaporated in the air. So when we are applying this kind of products in water, we are losing a lot of the, mm. the biological active compounds. So um, this is why we are using microencapsulated essential oils. It's a way of protecting them and uh, diminished a lot the evaporation of these compounds that are the main ones that have the antimicrobial or antiparasitic effects. Another thing is that when we perform bath treatments, it's um, a one-time treatment. So even we, if we are performing them uh, every day, we are using uh, a lot of product uh, because we have to dissolve them in, in water and it's, it has a, a time limiting if effect and uh, um, it will be an effect from the outside. So it can affect the, the parasite, okay, maybe it will detach, but it will not improve or change so much the, the physiological. So this is a little bit like humans, no? We can uh, put a, a coat and protect ourselves, but if we are strong from the inside, it will prevent further infections. So here we believe with the nutritional strategies is that we can apply them in a longer term. So it's a continuous, so, uh, a continuous mm -hmm. treatment. Um, in our examples, we apply them for two months more or less. Uh, so it improves the inner immune system to fight against those parasites. So uh, as we said, we have a prevention of the attachment, not a treatment. It's more a, a prevention than a control when you already have the problem. And I think this is the big difference. Of course, it can be ineffective, uh, the bath uh, immersions, but I don't think it's a long-term solution, maybe a punctual one. Okay. Uh, looks like the similar question also. Uh, is this essential oil also effective for endoparasite? Did you? Okay, so we don't have um, any challenge for endoparasites, but we did uh, analysis for the intestine as well, and we have uh, an enhancement of the intestinal immunity as well, and we have a similar response that the one that we observed in gills, we can observe it in the intestine as well. So uh, the part of the microbiota, it's also altered and it has beneficial effects in the, the intestine. We believe that it, if it can have an effect on the gills when you are feeding essential oils and this effect can reach the gills, we strongly believe that we'll have an increased uh, effect in the intestine, where is the, the place where the essential oils are more active and being liberated to the, the, the intestinal environment. So we, we strongly believe that we, if we have this effect on the gill that are pretty far from the, the, the site of release of the essential oils, the response in the testing can be interesting as well. So, but we don't have exact data on this, so it, it could be interesting also to, to check on it. And also one from uh, Ibu Heni, she asked about the dosage of the essential oil. Did you explain? Mm, 
Well, this is a company related information. Ah. So uh, I can say that the inclusion of the, the product in the feed was 0.5% uh, of the diet in the case of guilt head seabream, but uh, the exact compounds, this is uh, company information and it can vary according to fish species or um, the, the type of pellet. So it, it depends, it has to be checked for, for, for the species. Okay. I think there are still a lot of questions that not uh, be answered and maybe Balini still have a, an answer for a lot of questions in the chat room. Okay, Pak Musa, thank you. Uh, I try to answer the question from Wiwi, Wiwi Nemo. What is the difference between freshwater egg and marine egg? Mm, I don't know much about uh, marine egg, but the causative agent is different. In freshwater, egg caused by Ichthyopterius multifiliis, and the marine fish, the egg marine caused by Cryptocarion, cryptocarion irritans. And the clinical sign, very similar with a tiny white spot uh, in the surface of the body. And then, uh, Ibu Wiwi Mandi Angin, uh, what kind of paste of E uh, that we, what is it? easy to to treat i think the infective stage the the teron or the tropon tropon is a, a paste on the body and the teron small small tropon before they attach the host I think um, yeah from Iqbal Khoir Pa Iqbal Khoir PT Kianhu I don't know uh, I think you share your experience about the what is it episodic ulcerative syndrome yeah uh, EU is also known as mycotic granulomatosis or uh, red spot disease caused by water mold, apanomyces impedance. But we do not uh, discuss uh, in the webinar uh, today. I think. It's enough, Pamusa. The question is the tilapia like like hmm. virus uh, could infect it another species. Uh, I don't know how to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> um, for more information, maybe can uh, discuss with uh, my senior uh, in my office, Pamusa. Okay. The, yes, for the tilapia infected uh, TILT. Okay. So, uh... I think uh, these are the discussion session. So, uh, do you have a last uh, message, Mbak Lily? Mm, I think uh, we have to be careful, be aware with a parasitic infection. 
Okay. And Ibu Tuti? Uh, Final uh, statement. Okay. Uh, parasitic disease uh, is one uh, the serious problem in this. Uh, but uh, don't worry, there's possible to control and there are various methods to reduce or avoid uh, the, the, the disease. Thank you. Okay. And for Mbak Joanna, before giving the uh, final statement, I would like to make it sure. So Arotec G is for preventive, not for curing. We believe it's more for preventing than curing. Of course, ah. uh, it will have a, a, for the, the the biological process that we see. If there is a neutrophil activation, it could be ha also uh, an impact on fish that are already parasitized. Uh, the question is that we wanted to know if it can prevent it from because this is also the final message that I I would like to give is that uh, we should prevent to have problems not to fight against them. So, okay. and there are a lot of, of things and it's not a, just one way, just not with, with uh, nutrition, like Tuti was presenting there, a whole biosecurity and uh, management uh, thing that can help to prevent nutrition in, is one of the tools. So I, I would like to uh, challenge uh, producers and, and aquaculturists to to try to to prevent it using the all the information that is available and the, that is being developed. Okay, and actually I want to ask the price, but it is a <laughs> question, so maybe we'll, I don't know it. I, I don't know it, Musa. Discuss it later. <laughs> yeah. So it is uh, the best way to use the arotic G is by. Uh, used through the through feed, uh, yes. edit, edited in feed. It's a feed so, additive, yes. Uh, rather uh, by submersion. Yeah, so it's a feed additive. It's a micro encapsulated feed additive. It, yes. it was formulated that way. Okay. Uh, so, do you have the final message or the last statement before we close this webinar? It was uh, just what I said, the, the prevention of the, the, the problems are the better solution because it's really difficult. Uh, if you are fighting for a problem that you already have, maybe the problem or it, it's not the parasite, the, par the, the problem would be in your uh, culture conditions because otherwise you, you, you wouldn't have a parasite there or a disease provoked by the parasite. So you should look back to your production uh, conditions rather than try to fix it with chemicals and other strategies. So preventing is always the best solution. But this is the best. Preventing is always the best solution. <laughs> Prevent better than curing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, thanks to all the speakers and the participants. Today, we already uh, listened to uh, the three uh, best presenters that are giving presentation about parasite in ornamental fish and how to handle the parasite in freshwater fish. And the very interesting last speaker, uh, which presents about uh, arotic G, the use the use of essential oil or RTG in handling or uh, preventing uh, the disease in fish. Uh, I hope we can enjoy this uh, uh, webinar and have a lesson from this webinar. And for all the speaker, thank you very much. And all the audience, uh, which very patient to wait this uh, discussion uh, till the end, uh, two to a half, two hour and a half, and for other researcher that may uh, want to make collaboration uh, between uh, Bajuana or uh, Technovit, it is very welcome if you want to make uh, collaboration, join research or testing the product. And uh, remember, because uh, the Fampai is a commercial uh, company, of course, uh, the goal is 
uh, after proving the uh, quality of the product, yeah, of course, do you want to use or not and to develop or not? This is the most important. So thank you very much. I would like to close this webinar by using Alhamdulillah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Have a nice day. See you in the next Thank webinar. Thank okay. you, Joanna. Thank you. Thank you, Bututi. Thank you, Malili. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Pamusa. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Nice talk, everyone. Nice to meet Thank you, too. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Musa. Finally, we come to the end of the event. I hope this webinar will bring some benefits for you. And I do apologize if any words less pleasing in hosting this webinar. Don't forget to fill the link for the presence links and to get your certificate. So stay safe, stay healthy, stay positive, keep your distance, keep follow government's health instruction and see you in the next webinar. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you, Mbak Bunga. Okay. This is uh... Uh, so for the link, we will close the link for the presence links about five minutes in the this uh, in the advance. So. Uh, so the certificate will, will be automatic. Oh, okay, will be automatically sent uh, by email. Okay, so if uh, for you uh, who haven't uh, filled the link uh, presence links yet, uh, you can fill the link now. Thank you. Okay, this is a free session. So, uh, if someone want to give, a... thank you, thank you. Say hello. Okay, terima kasih banyak. Terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Musa. Thank, thank you for for the webinar. Bye, Musa. Thank you, Bajuana. It's a cool name, Arotek G. Yes, you like it? Yeah. So let's see if we sell it. <laughs> but Bye. I have a task. How to make uh, Thank the you, success. Thank you, Pujo, Anna. Yes. So have a nice see day. you soon. Stay safe. Soon. Thank oh. you. Thank you. Wait the link and uh, also the appreciation certificate. <laughs> Thank you. Ahora. Claro. Ah, no. Sí. Salam hangat, Pak Musa. Ya, salam hangat. Pak Irfan dari mana, Pak Irfan? Gorontalo, Pak Musa. Wah, Gorontalo luar biasa. Ya. Salam hangat buat Pak Glen di Huayon. Oh, Pak Glen di Bogor. Ya. Ya. Oh, Bapak main ikan konsumsi atau apa ya. mana? Saya guru pak guru. Oh guru di Gorontalo. Ya siap. Guru apa pak? Eh, budidaya pak perikanan budidaya. Oh budidaya masya ya. Allah. Terima kasih pak Musa ya. Sama-sama pak. Ya. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum. Salam berbelah berkatul. Om Rekan bagi yang ingin berbicara. Ada yang ingin menyampaikan.